Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to focus on the definition of perpendicular bisector theorem. Before we go over the uh, perpendicular bisector theorem, let's have the definition of perpendicular, let's have a definition of the bisector, and let's have the definition of these two words combined together, perpendicular bisector. We remember that when we say perpendicular, that is an act of meeting at a given line or plane at right angle. This means that the angle formed is 90 degrees. Again, it should be right angle. Now, if we say bisector, it comes from the root word bisect, which means to cut or divide into two equal parts. So if we are going to put them together, perpendicular bisector, what does it mean? So perpendicular bisector is a ray, line, line segment, or a plane that is perpendicular to a segment at its midpoint. So there are two conditions that should be met in order that it can be considered perpendicular bisector. First, it has to be perpendicular. It should form 90 degree angle. It has to be a bisector at the same time. That means it should cut the given segment into two pieces. So in this case right here, our line P is a perpendicular bisector to segment AB. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that um, up here. The reason why line P is perpendicular bisector to AB, it's because again, it is perpendicular. We can see that small square right there. It's telling us that this line P is forming 90 degree angle with line segment AB. And at the same time, this line P is a bisector. It cuts AB into two equal pieces. So line P is a perpendicular bisector of segment AB. When can we not have a perpendicular bisector? Now I'd like you to look at these pictures. In this picture, we can tell that ray MC, so this ray right here is not a perpendicular bisector. Again, there are two conditions in order that a ray or a line or a line segment is a perpendicular bisector. It has to first form a 90 degree angle. There's no label that there's a small square there where it's 90 degree angle. So that is that does not qualify this as a perpendicular bisector. Although others are going to say, but it bisects it. The line A or line segment AB was cut into two pieces. But then again, it has to be forming 90 degree angle or a perpendicular to a given line segment. And at the same time, a bisector. Both conditions should be met in order that we can say that um, a given ray, a line, or a plane is a perpendicular bisector. So in this problem right here, we can go ahead and say that ray CM is not a perpendicular bisector to segment AB. Now let's look at the next picture. In this picture right here, our line P is perpendicular to segment AC. There's a small square that tells us that it forms 90 degree angle. So we have the first condition met. Now let's look at the second condition. It should be bisecting the given line segment. As you can see, the um, length of AB is given this tick and the length of BC has another tick. This tick marks here tells us that they are not the same. That means that line AC was not bisected or it was not cut into two or was not, wasn't divided into two equal pieces. So then we can go ahead and say that line P is not a perpendicular bisector because although it is perpendicular, but it did not bisect segment AC. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that down here. Now let's have the perpendicular bisector theorem. Looking at this picture right here, line CM is a perpendicular bisector of segment AB. Again, two conditions were met. It is perpendicular. It forms 90 degree angle. And this AB was cut into two pieces. So again, line CM is a perpendicular bisector of segment AB. A, B. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that up here. We remember that the perpendicular bisector theorem states that 
any point on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant from both the endpoints of the line segment on which it is drawn. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that theorem right here. So what does this mean? If we put dot on line segment CM, the distance from that dot all the way to point A and point B would be equal or congruent. So then we can go ahead and say that since C is on the perpendicular bisector here, we can say that AC is actually congruent to that of CB. So I can go ahead and write that uh, down here. So that is AC is congruent to that of CB. Now what happens if I add more dots in there? So if I put another dot here, so let's put another dot here, let's call this as uh, dot uh, K, so that we can go ahead and draw a line segment that connects from uh, point K to point A that is actually equidistant to the one from K all the way to B, so that we can go ahead and say that, in this case right here, we have um, AK would be congruent to KB. That also works on the other way. So if I put another dot here, let's name this as dot um, H, so that we go ahead and connect A and H together, that would be congruent to that of HB. So this would be congruent. So I'll have um, four um, tick marks on this. That means these are congruent. I'll put three tick marks for that, three tick, mark, uh, tick marks for that, so that we can go ahead and add that up here. We have um, AH is congruent to that of HB. So this is what we mean by perpendicular bisector theorem. That's it. If you found this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya.